Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today in episode 26 of Friday Morning Ramblings, I'm going to go on about getting your garden ready for your summer plants, show you some techniques I'm using, the warm weather crops. It's May 2nd. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Last year I had a frost come in, middle of May, devastated a lot of my plants, but this year I checked out the weather maps. Looks like no frost is coming for at least, well, at all, hopefully, but not for 10 more days. I checked out the Weather Channel, no frost is around, so I think I'm good. Now, I have a pretty big garden. I was just kind of panning the main garden. So I've pretty much planted 80% of my warm weather crops, and I planted them right here. And a lot of people say, well, why can't you just sow directly, you know, in the garden, in the beds, wherever you want to put the plants? And you can do that. However, my garden's a little bit in transition from the cool weather crops, a little bit. I saved a lot of space this year. I didn't overplant. But if I were to seed start all these in the places that I want them to go in my garden, I'd have to be walking around a lot to water them, check on them, tend them. So I start them, depending on the plants, larger containers. I have zooks, cukes, okra, winter squash, summer squash, all kinds of different plants in there. Nice large containers, a lot of that I'm just repurposing. When you're starting your zooks, your cucumbers, squash, you want to put them in larger containers. They just get a big root system. I don't want to have to pot these up. I want these to grow in here, go right into the garden. But for tending, I can just come right here, water them. It's been getting up into the 80s. I don't want to have to go and walk around, check on all these seedlings as they're establishing in the garden. So there's nothing wrong with just starting them like this. They're sitting where it stays sunny. Keep an eye on them, it's right by my door. They will all go into the garden about two to three weeks after they emerge in those cells. Let's go walk into where my radishes are. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with those. We will walk into the radishes. These are my leeks. One really important tip is whenever you're transplanting your onions or your leeks, I would water them every day. They just need a lot of water to get the roots established. And once they do, you know, the greenery will be all flopping on the ground, but in three days, regular watering, they're all going to perk up and they'll look something like that. So, leeks, the onions are doing really well. So far, I haven't been able to find a lot of the wireworms. They're there, but I did treat them with the neem oil drench, and that seems to be working. I just, before I talk more about that, I want to see how well they do. So, thank goodness I forgot this part, because when I came to cut in, I forgot to show you some damage on the kale, and I realize Mother's Day is next Sunday, but I'm gonna leave it in there just in case I don't get a Friday morning ramblings out next week. I still got Mother, Mother's Day into the video. So this is my kale, it's not protected. There are holes in there, bigger holes like that. That's usually snails or slugs, and you can use iron phosphate bait or sulfur bait. They're baited pellets, with either iron phosphate or sulfur in, there, sulfur in there, and that takes care of the snail and slugs. When you turn this over, it might be hard to see, but you'll see some glistening. That's usually a sign that it's a snail because it leaves a um, snail trail, basically. Let's see. So you look for that slimy, reflective, iridescent trail that sometimes well, will, will be dried when you look in the morning, and that's how you know you have snails. This will also get small holes in here, too. They may be from the cabbage looper, they're going to be coming in. There's the butterfly right on cue that lays those eggs. And the best thing for that is to cover it with the egg fabric or use neem oil and just spray every seven to 10 days. That helps take care of the problems with these leafy uh, greens. Potato bags filled with the potatoes. They're emerging. That whole potato experiment is going really well. You can see all the potatoes popping up in there. Now I'm kind of in that transition period, like we get the, the just crazy weather. So we go from it being cool to being 85 degrees. That's why I can't really grow broccoli, um, cauliflower right now. So I I'm not growing much, at none actually. That will all be planted in August for a nice long cool period through September, October, November and maybe even into December. So this is one area where I have the radishes planted. The peas are doing well. They're all gonna be up to speed. But now that the radishes have been 
matured for a good 40 days, I need to take them all out, even the ones that are smaller. It's time to clear them all out. And you can see a little bit on the smaller side, I've been pulling out the larger ones. Keeping your radishes going past 40 days, there are big ones in there, isn't really going to have them get any larger. They're going to stay small. So these are really kind of the end of the harvest. I've been harvesting them over a two week period. And you want to just get in. Don't wait around for the smaller ones to mature. Look at that. Clear them all out. Woo! Well, that's a nice icicle radish. That's a white icicle. And pretty much just that quick, you know I've cleared them out. So just that quick, I clear out the space, finger holes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I won't keep counting. And this will be another place for radishes. So you want to transition when your plants are spent, they've come to the end, just take them out. New radishes will go in. I'll get a second crop around the first week of June. I put two seeds per hole, thin it to one when they're about that tall. Same with cilantro. This is cilantro that overwintered. It's starting to flower. I'll be leaving the cilantro here to flower. I can still take, you know, the really fresh looking green leaves from the sides, but the flavor might change a little bit once the flowers start, but these will attract really um, cool looking pollinators and predatory insects. It's a really good plant for doing that. But I'm also going to plant more cilantro seed today. Planted some right in there a couple weeks ago. So every two or three weeks you can plant more radishes, more cilantro, vegetables that get spent within say 45 days or so. Keep sowing them in succession every couple of weeks and they will continue to grow until the weather just isn't right. For instance, here is the lettuce. It's doing beautifully. Just love the colors. Even if I plant more lettuce now, it's going to get too hot. So I'm not going to get really nice loose leaf, loose heads from the loose leaf lettuce like this because the temperature is changing. It's really when the soil starts to warm up, lettuce decides to bolt, set flowers, seeds, so, and the flavor changes. So it's just not going to work. Wanted to show you about a hand space, hand and a half between here really gives them enough space to form beautiful heads. Just harvested two yesterday. When I cut it, cut it from the bottom, leave the roots in, more leaves will come up. You're not going to get full heads, but you'll get more leaves, more leaves, and you'll be able to kind of keep your harvest going until it gets too warm. But I'll be taking two of these every day over the next seven days, and these will all be used. This is going to get transitioned over to summer crops. And part of what I showed you up on the steps, right in there, will be the cucumbers. So rather than plant cucumbers in there, maybe I forget about them. Maybe I put some cucumbers over there, other parts of the garden, and have to keep moving around to check on them, put them in one spot, start them in containers, and then just pop them in when they're ready. The kale in here is doing really well. No insect damage on the leaves at all. Three plants actually died and I think something got to the roots. Not sure what it was, but I'll re I will replace the plants in there with some other kale plants. But this is really effective. The ag fabric works. I'm kind of getting used to how it looks. And as we walk around, I'll show you some different insect damage that is starting up and talk to you about how you treat that. Spinning around this way, replaced a lot of my sweet peppers, found them on sale got a good price for them. Sometimes you just have to replace your plants. You don't want to be waiting around for a damaged plant to recover. This is the poblano that was hit by that frost. And it's starting to bud. You probably can't see it right in the joint there where there used to be a leaf. That would come back or will come back, except I'm going to pull it out. But it's going to take a long time to get back up to speed. If you have a replacement, put a replacement in. You know, with shorter seasons, or depending on how your season are, you really want to get the pepper in, get it growing, get it producing, and not necessarily save a struggling pepper, although it's difficult. That pepper did look like this. That's about where it should be. 
this area is growing a little bit before I start do doing a series on it. Over here, you'll notice a stake there, stake there, and then two more right there. That's not for growing anything. As you're pulling a big hose through your garden, I water, you know, by hand right now. Um, in July, sometimes I put up a sprinkler system. But if you're pulling a heavy hose around, you don't want the hose to whip across all your plants and snap them. So if you put in these stakes, when you turn the corner, when I would go down there, these stakes catch the hose and it keeps it from whipping across and damaging plants. And I have these positioned in different places throughout the garden so that I can kind of just snake the hose around and I don't have to worry about breaking plants. And how do I know that? Because I used to not have them and I broke plants. Thinking, and be honest, don't be lazy. I was lazy, I figured, oh, I'll just, you know, move the hose slowly through here. You get distracted, you forget, and sure enough, you're gonna break a tomato plant that's doing really well. That's kind of cool, that's from a woodpecker. This space is gonna get cleared out, finishing up just taking these leaves of the overwintering Swiss chard, that's gonna start trying to flower soon. And again, rather than having bush cucumbers seeded in there, competing with the weeds, me having to tend them, I'm starting them in those containers and they're gonna grow right on here. So you can kind of start planning your summer garden by starting in those flats. I have plenty of space. I'm just not weeded out, ready to go. But it was real easy to fill those containers, drop the seeds. I'll sort of get a jump on the season and I don't have to come out here and fix up all these beds and fill them. I can sort of do them at my own pace. Everything in here looks great. Cool weather crops, bib lettuce, spinach, endive, mustard greens. This is um, bok choy, some beets in there too. The bok choy is not gonna make it because this heat is coming in again and this flowers like that. So the bok choy, I learned again, best to grow this September, October, November in my area and you get really, really nice heads of the Chinese cabbage. The weeds are coming back in, but I'm getting everything set up. I cleaned up the yard getting these all prepped for tomatoes. Let me show you some of the tomatoes, some of the issues going on with them. Oh, I left a six pack of peppers out there. I'm surprised that's still alive. So these are not tomatoes. Some of these were damaged by frost, like you saw the plant that was just really beat up. Here, now these are some of my favorite peppers facing heaven. They got really damaged, so I broke off the top and you can see that they are coming back. And I'm gonna let these come back because I can't find replacements, but they're starting to take off really fast and they're going to recover. This is a jalapeno starting to come back and you could let it go, but they're pretty easy to replace. So I'm gonna replace these. I want I don't want to lose many weeks waiting for a plant to recover. I don't mind a little bit, but depending on whether or not I can find the plant, it's going to get replaced. So here is the tomato arch. I've been talking <laughs> for six months about being more disciplined and just putting four cherry tomatoes down there because last year it was too large. And of course, there are now four cherry tomatoes down there. Just can't help myself, but I want to try and prune it a little bit more. But I want all of this to be eight different kinds of cherry tomatoes. These are, that's a Rapunzel, and then these are some replacements of larger heirloom tomatoes I'll talk about in other videos. So in here, you can see holes. I have flea beetles. Flea beetles make tiny holes in your plants. They're not necessarily a huge problem with tomatoes. They tend to love my eggplant. I'll show you that in a second. But I there's no flowers on here. There's no pollinators. This is just going to get some organic insect dust. That will kill off the flea beetles. Otherwise, the plants look pretty good. I will link the video to show you how I set up the soil at the end of the year. It looks beautiful. And I really didn't put a lot in when I planted these tomatoes. If you put the work in at the end of the year, 
prep the beds. You can kind of dig the hole, put the plant in, water it in. I do use the fish emulsion, get it set up, and it's going to get everything it needs from how you took care of the soil over last season and at the end of the year. And I'll be talking more about that in videos. This bed will have 64 corn stalks in there and I'm going to cage it up. I've been talking about that. So last year I didn't put the corn in till way till towards the end of May. This year I'm going to put it in this week so I'm going to get that set up. Here's some more. Here's a good example. So you know you saw me take all the radishes out of here. Peas look great. All these have to come out right now. Different sizes. These are all delicious. They're crisp, they're sweet, they're not pithy. But if I wait longer, and you can just see how many radishes. I mean, I got more than I need in here. I'll be giving these away. You can see how well the radishes do, how, much, how many radishes you get in a small space. But once you get several that are to size, the plants are producing, just yank them all out because you just don't want them sitting around. You want to grab your radishes when they are nice and green, no stalking, no flowering. I'll cut all these up. I'll probably actually pickle some of them in um, apple cider vinegar. They'll be delicious. These will all get replanted with something today. And you might have noticed there aren't a lot of the uh, round red radishes in there. Those are the ones I really love. So these are all going to just be planted, replanted with either the Roxanne radish or the cherry bell, you know. You don't need to do six, eight different varieties. I used to do that. I didn't eat them all. Looked great for video. But now I plant more of what I like. I wanted to try out the white icicles because I wanted to see how large they get. Um, and they're good. They're a little spicier if you don't like spicy radishes. But the cherry bells, they're just sweet, crispy, delicious right now. So that's what's going to go in for my second wave. The towers are doing really well been doing a series on this. I'll just give you a quick look, but I am harvesting off of here. The peppers on here are recovering. They were beat up by the frost. They're all going to get a drink of fish emulsion today. A lot of this will be harvested out, but I only have about three weeks or so before my lettuce starts changing. So no more lettuce in the ground, but I have plenty around the garden for my needs and I'm really loving the tomato and basil tower. If you have limited space I do recommend these towers. I am, I think you know, affiliated with Greenstalk Garden. You can find them there. They're in my video description. But if you can't afford them, I understand, make sure you spend your money on something that has full UV protection. If not, you're going to spend less money, but they're going to degrade and crack and you're going to have to replace them. This tower here is on its fifth season. No issues whatsoever. This is a little garden space that I set up for my wife so that she can find the sweet peppers and things that she likes. We're going to go up to the side of my house too. I planted her a container garden. Sweet peppers in here. The jalapenos are in the middle. She likes those. I wanted to show you the eggplant because these have only been in for maybe two weeks now. Just closing my cage there or my cold frame. These are habaneros. She won't confuse those. But already there are holes in the leaves and the and you can actually see little black specks. That's how you know you have the flea beetles. They are already tearing holes into my eggplant. Now eggplant is going to look a little beat up if you put it in at the end of April through May until the heat comes. It loves heat. Keep it well watered. Feed it with the fish emulsion in the beginning. But once the heat comes this is going to take off. Unless I don't treat the flea beetles. The flea beetles will keep putting holes in here. It'll slow the growth down. The leaves will be yellow. So these are going to get the dust too to kill them off. No flowers, I'm not worried about pollinators, but you want to catch the flea beetles really early on your eggplant. Over here, 
this was the first wave of the great potato experiment. They're doing really well. I'm going to fill this up a little bit with soil. I don't expect much from that. But in here, I started them halfway down. Let them grow a little bigger than what I was planning on doing. But I'm going to fill the soil up to here. And I'm just going to see if potatoes form where I put the new soil. But that'll be part of the experiment. But I'm going to have tons of potatoes. And in fact, I'm going to be planting more just to have a big supply. Along with those, I'm going to be putting out lots of green beans because I like green beans and potatoes. And I really... I think it's really important just to plant what you like to eat or what you like to share. You don't need all kinds of different varieties. You'll find, I think, greater happiness just growing the things that you like. And then over time, you add in a couple new things. Let me walk back up to where we started. Then we'll walk to the side of the house. You saw all the open space that's in the garden now and where different things are going. So again, all of this will populate all of that space, which is pretty cool. I'll still be dropping some seeds and some other plants, but again, I don't have to put these all over. Remember where I put them, water them, take care of them, weed, check for insects. I can just do it all right here. The plants will be big and strong. My garden will be ready in a little bit. Over in this space is where I have a lot of flowers. Let me get my shadow out of the way. And it's in transition. Figured I would show you what my garden looks like half the time. But these are all annuals, bringing pollinators, hummingbirds, and just a place to kind of sit, relax, enjoy the colors. All right, let's get to the side of the garden over there. This is inside the fence on the side of my house. And this is really where I have an herb garden and really the garden for my wife and just planting the stuff she enjoys, which is so important. All strawberries they're doing really really well I'm gonna have maybe a thousand strawberries seriously instead of using ground cover ivy stuff you can't eat I recommend using strawberries so let's come right up here I think you saw a glove on the ground we had crazy wind for the last two days I couldn't shoot any video I mean they were like 30 40 miles an hour actually I will cut in uh, the towers that I was just showing you and how they stood up to this wind. Um, a lot of people ask me, will those towers survive 30 mile hour gusts? And they will, and I'll, I'll show you why. And the trick is just fill them full of water, saturate the soil if you know windy days are coming. So a lot of people ask me, how good are the towers in the wind? They do a pretty good job. We can get 30 mile an hour gusts here. But the whole trick is when you know windy days are coming, saturate your containers down, makes them a lot heavier and it can deal with these gusts of wind. So this is my herb garden. Rosemary, mint, sage, a determined tomato tucked in right there. Basil, she loves basil, tomato, jalapenos, all in this space, easy to manage, easy to water, the things that she enjoys. Now, I'm leaving this space, more strawberries, more raspberries, going to let them grow out of control and I'm going to slowly be digging these out over the year to go into other parts of the garden and to give to other people. This actually sort of was my plan. I wanted this, these three beds to be where I propagate strawberries, raspberries and move them all over the property. Um, what I learned is you have clumping or erect, erect varieties of blackberries and raspberries and they stay somewhat contained and then you have the ones that kind of trail and send out vines everywhere. You want to get the clumping type, the erect type blackberries or raspberries because they stay contained and the whole key is containment. They are just, the rose raspberries are just taking over everything. Maybe I'll put them in the woods, I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but that's what I recommend. This is all overwintering kale, this will be all be pulled out, tomatoes will go in there. Here's an issue with the cold that came in and they're starting to come back. The soil just gets really cold. There's a little more shade here. So they were really, really yellow. So they got to drink a fish emulsion, but I did come in and hit them with the chemical fertilizer at half strength. If your plants are struggling, you don't have to be like, oh, I need to be 100% organic, unless you want to. 
but you don't have to be 100% organic thinking that you're harming your plants if you're not. That's my whole point. So these got a shot of fish emulsion. They got a shot of the chemical fertilizers. They'll respond. I'll go back to my organic ways and these will be really well. All sweet peppers and jalapenos. That's what she likes. Nice and close. You don't have to space your peppers out as much as you think. In some places I have two, pepper, two peppers per hole. This will be a highly productive little space. And let's finish off coming up. You know, maybe you don't have the room and you just want something simple. On a balcony, on a deck, you can have an herb garden. And this is coming in full force. These have not been fed anything. They were just well prepared last year. I think I talked about this before, but it's oregano, lavender, chives, mint, thyme, same thing up here. And you can just set something up like this. You can see all the lushness. These are really actually ready to be cut. They can be dried. You'll get more coming out. But you can do a nice little herb garden in a space like this, and it'll kind of connect you to the outdoors, you know, in your garden. When you get more space, certainly expand. Hope you enjoyed the quick Friday morning rambling. Again, enjoy your Mother's Day, and I will see you in a garden next week. Thanks for watching, and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.